Hi guys! I wanted to show you some new uh, watercolors that I got. Um, this is more of, I guess, yeah, watercolor video and not a scrapbooking video. So just uh, stay tuned if you're interested. Um, I'm continuing my watercolor obsession and for me, one of the things that really inspire me and make me want to paint is just beautiful colors. Um, I like to mix my colors on my paper, on my painting, not in a palette. And um, yeah, it's been a really wonderful journey and there are so many beautiful watercolors out there so I just got a few new ones and I wanted to show you um, so I have kind of a swatch system but I thought that was a bit boring so um, I'm just going to show you uh, the ones that I made fast for these five new ones so um, I have the Daniel Smith um, Mayan Dark Blue, which is uh, PB82, that's the pigment. So it's a single uh, color um, paint and it's just this beautiful, beautiful dark blue. And I just put uh, below it the Schmincke Indigo because that's kind of my, the most similar color that I have in my um, palette that I use uh, daily and they are similar the the schminke seems a bit on the a, a little bit grayer than this one but the schminke is a mixture of two pigments so if this is something that um, is really important to you uh, single pigment colors and uh, you're in the market for some dark blue ones this one is really beautiful it's a beautiful color and um, you can do um, you know mixing charts and see how it mixes with your other colors but I find those uh, a little bit uh, I guess I'm just too ADHD for them uh, I'm just a mess and they are to organize they're very pretty and sometimes I do them but um, I just like to play around more with color so this is kind of my uh, mixing chart um, so this one's the one I made with this paint and yeah I just drop it in and mix it with some of my uh, other favorite uh, watercolors and I actually learn a lot from this and this is Similar, this is more true to how I would use it on a painting um, than to do a color chart uh, because, as I said, I like to let my colors mix on paper. So, what I learned from this is I can just see the subtle uh, shades that um, are created when these colors just flow to each other and yeah I get a pretty good idea of what to expect when if I want to use them on a painting and I just really love some of the um, combinations here so this one here is one of my favorite colors that I use all the time it's the core cobalt blue and a lot of cobalt teal and a lot of companies have a similar um, paint it's made from P G50 or PB50. I can't remember the pigment, um, but it's a gorgeous, gorgeous color that granulates and it's beautiful. So it just creates these lovely um, shades together with this Mayan dark blue. Uh, this is turquoise. It's also pretty kind of similar to this, but I kind of like how these two uh, look next to each other better than I like these two. It's just a personal preference. This used to be a cadmium yellow medium and it kind of got um, turned into a really nice uh, green. I especially like the areas where there's more yellow. Um, um, so that would be like a nice color to add, for example, in a floral um, if you wanted some interesting uh, greens. 
Here is a mixture with one of my favorite pinks and I really like uh, some of these shades of purple that I got. Um, what else I liked? Oh, this is uh, an orange that I can't remember the name of. <laughs> um, it's really beautiful. It's by Sennelier and with just a little bit of the, um, the Mayan dark blue I got this, I don't know, gorgeous color that I'm not even sure how to describe. I guess it's almost, it's like a light warm gray. Um, so I really applied the colors here lightly. You can see just the hint of the Mayan blue, I think in its purest form in this area. And I just love how these two mix. So I really like the neutral that they create. So this is like a mental note to myself and I keep this for a reference or I cut it up and uh, use it somewhere else. But I really, really love this gray that I got from these two colors. And another interesting uh, things that I saw, um, this is with the core transparent orange, I think they have. Schminke also has a very, very similar color that is just as beautiful. Um, also, I think it's called translucent orange or transparent orange. And I really like the contrast of these two together and how um, the core paints are very, they just flow into pretty much any other paint that I put next to them, um, except when I combine them and then they have to fight for it. But they just flow into most of my other um, brands of color. So you can really see how the uh, orange is taking over here. And this would be like really interesting, for example, for some night sky with, um, you know, just to add this as a bit of light or something. Um, and yeah, it's just a really interesting contrast. Now this, for example, is together with, I think this is Alizarin Crimson, and it's a nice purple, but it's just, for me personally, when I look at it, I'm like, okay, it's it doesn't get me really excited. Whereas these areas are really kind of talking to me. So um, I think it's just a really great um, way of, you know, seeing what you like and what you don't like. And here, this is another um, combination. So what I also learned from this is when I mix this color with, I guess it would be um, the closest to its complementary color on the color wheel, which in this case would be like um, a reddish orange or an orangey red. Um, I get this beautiful neutrals or semi-neutrals and that's just super interesting and I love this way of mixing color a lot more than you know just doing this on the palette and adding a little bit there's nothing wrong with it it's just my personal preference I could talk about watercolors forever <laughs> so this is my color chart for this paint um, I'm not gonna talk so much about each one um, just in case you're interested so this one another one I got is the Danielle Smith ultramarine turquoise and it's a beautiful, beautiful um, transparent turquoise. It's a mixture of two pigments, uh, PB29 and PG7. PG7 is phthalo green and PB29 I think is ultramarine. I'm not that, um, you know, well versed yet with uh, all my pigments, but I'm getting there. Um, and this color granulates. So um, it has this beautiful texture. I'm not sure the camera can pick it up because it's just a little uh, sample, but it granulates. And below it, I uh, put its um, sister, which is the Daniel Smith uh, Thalo Turquoise. Um, I think it's a mixture of the same pigments, but this one doesn't granulate. Actually, I'm not sure if it's the same pigments. I think, I think actually this one has Thalo Blue and Thalo Green mixed together. Don't quote me on this one, I'm not sure, but I know this one doesn't granulate. The colors are quite similar. The ultramarine turquoise is a tad more on the greenish side than this one, but I don't think even the camera picks it up. Eh, maybe a little bit. Um, 
so yeah obviously you know you don't need both unless you're a little bit crazy like me um, but I just like to experiment with some new paints um, so th this color here in the middle is the Holbein Horizon Blue and this one is a mixture and it's probably a little bit of a controversial one because it has PB15, PB PG7 so that's Thalo Blue and Thalo Green I think and PW6 which is white and a lot of people don't like um, to use white in their watercolors um, the purists say that the paper is the white when you paint in watercolors and I mostly tend to agree I have very few uh, paints with white but I do find that when used um, in a certain way it can be very um, like a really bright beautiful color and when you apply it heavily it will get opaque on you that's uh, the white adds um, this opacity to it and um, but yeah but if you use it kind of lightly um, I think it's a really beautiful color so let me see I think the turquoise I didn't do a lot with it and I think this one is the blue but my paper is really cream so I'm not too happy about this sample I'll probably make one on um, on a whiter piece of paper that this wasn't a good choice I just grabbed what was near me um, I can see a few things and I can definitely see that when applied heavily um, it is opaque and I I usually don't like that on my paintings I like everything to look um, very you know watercolory um, so I would definitely use this uh, particular paint um, sparingly uh, but yeah it's it's a really it's a pretty color so when you apply it lightly it's a really beautiful vibrant uh, blue would be great for a sky for like a clear sky and yeah just a fun color not my favorite in my palette but uh, a really pretty bright one and also if you like kind of the more muted um, shades or you like your paint to be opaque then um, Holbein definitely has some uh, appealing uh, mixtures if you're more on the pastel um, opaque uh, side of watercolors um, the last two uh, I want to show you today are the first one is the cobalt violet light and this is PV 47 and there is my little sample I'm kind of on the hunt for a really great um, kind of a red violet uh, color uh, I still haven't found like the one I have in my head I'm sure if I um, work on some mixtures I could come up with something but um, what can I say I'm spoiled I like to use a lot of colors and I don't like to mix them on my own so these two I would say are not as vibrant as I would like them to be uh, they're both very beautiful and they both granulate really lovely I think you can see that the texture is fantastic in both of these um, probably even more dramatic in the this is Daller Rowney cobalt magenta sorry I didn't mention that this paint and the pigment is PV 14 um, and yeah both of these are really great for texture and I just this is kind of the color that I'm imagining in my head but this one is just not bright enough when you pick it up it looks great in the tube but then when you pick it up it becomes a lot more transparent and um, less intense I would say um, it's still you know bright but you kind of need a lot to get this brightness and I kind of wish it had a little bit more pow to it um, I kind of sampled a few of this uh, I would say closest ones that I have right now in my palette um, none of them are exactly the same and I really love this color but I just wish it was stronger um, it is really interesting and I had uh, I had fun 
playing with it with mixtures because of this beautiful uh, granulation so I think you can see I mean look at that that is fascinating to look at and you can basically see that I think pretty much every other color that I added really takes over um, but you get those granules like those granules of this original color so this is you know I think this would be great if you're if you like doing landscapes or something like that then this would just add a really interesting texture um, I mostly paint kind of loose floral abstracts and I'm still searching for my thing but <laughs> um, but that's what I can imagine I think this would also be really interesting to use in florals um, this color because of the these beautiful transitions that you get uh, from if you put it um, more heavily and then you know how the other colors flow into it so this is my favorite cobalt teal and I think here I used uh, some one of my yellow greens uh, here is a yellow and that's a really interesting combo I really like how the yellow and um, the cobalt magenta mixed uh, with some orange also interesting wow. wow I just keep talking and talking I think you know they say kind of when in doubt use complementary colors because they really make each other pop and I think this is kind of a really good example of that because when I look at the this red violet and the yellow um, they just really make each other pop and also this little bit of green so I think for florals this would be a really interesting choice um, to get some great texture and here I mixed it I think with a color called which one was this it's either the turquoise or um, an emerald color and I mean just look at that look at that texture to me that's fascinating and here it is with the blue uh, with the dark blue and that doesn't really do anything for me I much prefer it in this combination with these colors so you know you learn as you go and this one is the cobalt violet light the Holbein paint and it behaves kind of similarly to this one it's also kind of a pushover color all the other colors um, kind of take over and you mostly get I think especially with a textured paper you mostly get the original color um, where it sinks into the paper um, but that's just really interesting you know I hope let's see if the camera can pick it up just this texture um, yeah so I'm excited to add these colors to my uh, palette and play a bit with them. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video and if you have any questions leave me a comment. Bye!